This Red Sox rotation just took a massive hit. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin. The Boston Red Sox rotation just refuses to stay healthy. It's not just this year. It's been the last couple of years as well. It feels like every single week since I have started this channel, we have made a video about some sort of Red Sox rotational injury, and this is just the latest video on that list. Yet today, it was announced that Garrett Whitlock will be joining the IL. James Paxton will be missing a couple of games. So what we are going to do in today's video is we're going to break it all down. We're going to talk about the latest Red Sox injury. We're going to talk about how it affects the Red Sox, how it affects Garrett Whitlock going forward, and we're going to talk about the players that are coming in to replace both Whitlock and James Paxson, plus what their impact on the Red Sox team could look like as well. But before we get into that, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's quickly go over James Paxton before we get into Garrett Whitlock. James Paxton has officially been placed on paternity leave for the Boston Red Sox, which means he is going to miss the next couple of games. Luckily for the Red Sox, though, it lines up with his starts perfectly, so he will be back to make his start and not miss a start on Friday, which, by the way, is pretty crazy how little paternity leave the MLB gives their players. But either way, the reason we are bringing up James Paxton in this video is because James Paxton going on paternity leave a allowed the Red Sox to call up Brandon Walter, who had been starting games in AAA, but when he was called up to the Red Sox earlier this season, he made one appearance out of the bullpen, where he went a pretty impressive six and two-thirds innings, allowing three earned runs on six hits while walking three and striking out two. Now, it wasn't really an insane debut for Brandon Walter, but it really wasn't a bad one either, and going six and two-thirds innings out of the bullpen in your Major League debut is certainly pretty impressive. Now, Alex Cora and the Red Sox both feel as though at the major league level, Brandon Walter isn't going to be starting many games. So in my opinion, and Alex Corey's opinion, the Red Sox opinion, Brandon Walter will be coming out of the bullpen in a sort of Chris Murphy-like role where he's taken a bulk of innings after someone comes in as an opener, which is the reason why I brought this up because with Garrett Woodlock going down, Brandon Walter has a legitimate chance to be an impact player with this big league club because he's going to have to fill the role of a Garrett Woodlock after, say, a Brandon Bernardino who's starting today or a Caleb or who started a couple of times gives you one or two innings to open up a ball game. So the only reason I brought up James Paxton is because in my opinion, Brandon Walter could be a big factor while Garrett Whitlock is down. And speaking of Garrett Whitlock, let's go over Garrett Whitlock's injury. Garrett Whitlock was taken out of the game after pitching just one inning in his last start. It was originally labeled as right elbow tightness, which is never a good sign, right? And the first news we got about it was yesterday, actually, when an article by Sean McAdam of Mass Live came out and it stated that the Red Sox may have dodged a bullet. There were sources within the Red Sox system that were saying that Garrett Whitlock structurally was okay. Now they haven't gotten the results of the MRI back, but most people are saying that this could have been a lot worse. And for Garrett Whitlock, that is a really, really great sign. Today, just a couple of hours ago, officially Garrett Whitlock was put onto the 15 day IL with right elbow inflammation, which again, Never really a great sign, but according to that Sean McAdam article, it could have been a lot worse. This is actually a very similar injury to what he was placed on earlier in the year as well. He was actually placed on the IL 15 days for the exact same thing. So if we're talking about timeline, logical to just use the amount of time that he had spent on the IL with this injury previously, right? Which was about three weeks. So best case scenario is this is a very similar injury to what Garrett Whitlock had experienced in the first half of the season where he was on the IL for three weeks, which wouldn't be the end of the world. But my problem with that timeline is the fact that this is the second time that this has happened this year, right? Obviously, the second time around, you're going to be more cautious. You're going to try and figure out how to fix it long term, which could lead Garrett Whitlock to being on the IL for much longer than originally anticipated. So quick update for you. Alex Cora just confirmed that it is a bone bruise for Garrett Whitlock, which is good because it means there's no structural damage. So the time on the IL should be around around what we were talking about when we were talking about his time spent with that inflammation, which is very, very good news because again, it could have been a lot longer than that. 
right now i would say about three weeks if it's very similar to what he had but it could be much longer depending on how they try and figure out how to make this a short-term problem rather rather than a long-term issue right and on top of that too garrett whitlock also said that it did feel different than when he first went onto the il so that could be a problem as well but either way again the red sox kind of dodged a bullet a little bit here in terms of how long garrett whitlock's going to be missing time but either way it is a big big hit to this red Red Sox rotation because right now you're down to just three legitimate starters Paxton Bayo and Crawford who is also still trying to figure out how to pitch at the big league level right so really it's just two reliable starters and a half of a starter who's still trying to figure himself out not Cutter Crawford's fault but that's where the Red Sox are right now because you've got Chris Sale on the IL you've got Corey Kluber on the IL I don't even know where he is you've got Tanner Houck on the IL and now you add Garrett Whitlock and suddenly your starting rotation depth is completely gone gone now the starting pitching has been fairly solid for you over the last couple of weeks in fact over the last six weeks it's been the fifth best era in terms of starting pitching in all of baseball but now you add in a ton of inconsistency into this rotation on top of having such an inconsistent year at the plate that's a little bit of a recipe for disaster for this red sox team and garrett whitlock was kind of the stabilizer there he was allowing this red sox team to keep their heads slightly above water garrett whitlock going down could mean disaster for this red sox team especially if he's out for longer than three weeks say he's out a month and a half that also puts him around the timeline of Tanner Hout coming back of Chris Sale coming back right how do the Red Sox tread water with most of their starters on the IL over the next couple of weeks it's going to be extremely extremely difficult now on top of that too when we're talking about Garrett Whitlock and what this means for him this could be a bit of an issue going forward in terms of his ability to be a starting pitcher right I have been in the camp of Garrett Whitlock being a starting pitcher on this Red Sox team for a pretty long time now I think he does have what it takes and he's shown it for most of this year that he does have what it takes to stay in this rotation the problem now is injuries right over the last couple of months he's had three different injuries over the last couple of years he's had like five or six different injuries at what point if you're the Boston Red Sox do you say okay we've invested money in you we've invested years in you we don't know if the risk is worth the reward in terms of your rotation ability not because of your ability to be a starting pitcher but because of your ability to stay healthy right is being in the bullpen a bit of an easier workload for Garrett Whitlock where he can go back to being that dominant reliever where he doesn't have to pitch every five days where you're going seven eight innings maybe that's where the Red Sox go again I still believe Garrett Whitlock can be a starting pitcher but after all these injuries you have to have a little bit of doubt in the back of your head that hey Garrett Whitlock may not be able to stay healthy enough to be a legitimate starting pitcher in Major League Baseball, which again is a problem for the Boston Red Sox, who invested a couple of years in Garrett Whitlock and a bunch of money for being a starting pitcher. And he was part of the future plans of the Boston Red Sox in terms of their rotation. So yeah, this is kind of a big impact type injury for a couple of different reasons, right? The Red Sox rotation is now in absolute shambles. Garrett Whitlock's future is a bit more in question than it has been before. And on top of that too, the future of the Red Sox rotation just took a little bit of a hit as well. So yeah, this may not seem like that big of a deal and you may have dodged a bullet long term with Garrett Whitlock, but the questions still remain and it's still going to have a pretty decent impact on this Red Sox team. Now to replace Garrett Whitlock or to replace James Paxson, one of the two, right? The other person called up was Taylor Scott. Taylor Scott is a newly added member to this Red Sox team. He's only made two appearances in Worcester for the Worcester Woo Sox, where he had a three ERA and a 6.58 FIP in just a couple of innings again in those two appearances. He did spend most of the year in the Los Angeles Dodgers organization, where he had a really impressive 137 ERA in 19 games for their AAA team, but unfortunately in Major League Baseball this year with the Los Angeles Dodgers, he made six appearances in six different games and has a nine ERA over over that time span if I'm going to be completely honest with you I think this move is just simply the Red Sox need bodies and Taylor Scott has some major league experience so maybe we could slot him in in the bullpen somewhere and we could just get arms on this team because again you have a mass amount of injuries to this Red Sox rotation and pitching staff in general right now you simply just need people to be in that bullpen and Taylor Scott seems like that kind of guy if we're talking about what we do to replace Garrett Whitlock in my opinion you really got to start looking for outside sources right if you're going to get to the deadline pick up it doesn't have to be a top line starting pitcher just someone who's going to be in that rotation stabilizing it for the next couple of months because 
right now you don't really have that outside of Paxson and Bayo and you could throw Crawford in there as well but in terms of short-term solutions I think Brandon Walter really does have a chance to make a bigger impact on this Red Sox team as he's going to be used like Chris Murphy like we talked about in a long relief slash starter not starter type role where he comes in after an opener right that to me is going to be the most interesting part of these moves obviously Garrett Whitlock and when he's going to be back is a bigger issue here but what's going to be most interesting to me is how Brandon Walter is used at the major league level and how long he is up here but either way this is just really really not what the Red Sox needed right now and hopefully Garrett Whitlock can get this figured out for more of a long-term solution as opposed to the short-term solution it appears as though he got the first time around but that's just my opinion so let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of this latest Red Sox injury? Do you think it's as impactful as I've talked about? Do you think it's less impactful than I've talked about? What do you think of Garrett Willock going on to the IL again? And let me know what you think of the couple of guys who are coming up to replace some players on this Red Sox team. Let me know all your thoughts on the latest Red Sox injury news in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. Helps these videos out a ton, and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the red seats.